In today's episode, some familiar structures make a return, I create a cutting, and finish the last bit of scenery. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, for another episode from the Modular Model Railway. Today's episode is proudly sponsored by both D-Rails and Model Railway Scenes. Great to have them on board and I'll be talking more about them later on. Over the last few episodes, I've been upgrading and rebuilding parts of the layout to get it ready for its first exhibition appearance at the Spa Valley Railway. At the time of filming, the show is now just a week away and there's still one final corner module that needs to be built, so this is really going to have to be a quick turnaround. It's also a pretty important module too, because this will form the scenic break where trains disappear into the fiddle yard. Now, on the other side of the layout, I have the railway disappearing into a tunnel, which works really well, but I don't want to do the same on this side. So instead, I've come up with a plan to create a cutting where the landscape rises up around the railway, hiding the trains from view before they finally disappear under a road bridge, through the back scene and into the fiddle yard. Sounds simple in principle, but Let's see what it's like in reality and get building. So here you can see the two main set pieces that I'll be building this entire module around. For those of you who watched my laser cutting videos, you might recognize the cottage I designed from scratch and then made, and I'm gonna have this sitting on top of the cutting. And then going over the track will be this road bridge, which will act as a scenic break as the line heads into the fiddle yard. As you can see, the track has already been laid and everything is wired up too, so we can jump straight in with all the scenics. I've got some foam blocks left over from packaging, which I'll use up to build the height either side of the bridge. With these matching the height of the road quite nicely, I'll weight these down while the glue underneath dries. Again, more foam can be used for the rest of the cutting, with blocks being used for larger areas where support is needed. Meanwhile, sheets cut to the correct profile can also be used to roughly mark out how the land needs to rise and fall across the module. And I've also got some leftover polystyrene too, so I'll use this on the opposite side. And it really is just a case of using whatever you can find. This is all going to be hidden underneath the surface anyway, so as long as it's stable enough, it doesn't need to be particularly pretty. Where the cottage will sit on top of the cutting, I really need the land to be flat here, so I'll use a piece of foam board to create a basic surface. Chicken wire can then be laid on the areas around this where the landscape can be a bit more random. And where the chicken wire meets the baseboard, it can just be stapled to the surface to hold it in position. Also, it's worth cutting away any harsh corners that poke through the holes. This way, you won't have a weird pointy bump in your landscape when the top surface goes on. The chicken wire is then laid around the rest of the module to create a nice general surface that undulates naturally around the railway. And you can start to see how this will rise up towards the house and the bridge to create a nice scenic break for the trains. I'll add an initial skin to this now using paper mache. Although this probably won't be strong enough on its own, it's enough to create a basic shell that I can then lay plaster bandage on later. The plaster bandage on its own is quite heavy when wet, and it would sink down into the gaps in the chicken wire, but having a shell like the paper mache to sit on eradicates this issue. And I need to be careful not to make too much of a mess on the track. Obviously, the PVA glue in the paper mache will dry clear eventually, but it'll save me a bit of time if I don't have to clean it up afterwards, and with the exhibition looming, this really does need to be a very quick build. 
This series has proudly been sponsored by Derails Model Shop, and if it wasn't already clear, I am a really big fan of theirs. Uh, before they were sponsors of the channel, even before the channel existed in fact, whenever I needed supplies or perhaps a new model for the layout if I was feeling extravagant, well, Derails is always the first place I head to. Uh, I actually got to meet Dan from Derails at an exhibition not too long ago, and he said it's been amazing to see all the web traffic they get from you guys heading over from these videos. So. Thank you so much for not only supporting them as a model shop, but also the channel too, because without sponsorships like this, I don't get to make these sorts of videos. Of course, if you are new around here and you haven't checked them out yet, well, what are you waiting for? Head over to derails.co.uk or click the link down in the description. I promise you won't regret it. They have loads of stuff on their website for all scales and gauges. So yeah, thank you so much to Derails for sponsoring this video. The paper mache has dried overnight, so I now have an idea of what the landscape on this module will look like. You may notice I've also added some fascia boards to the side, and these are simply made from thin MDF cut to match the land profile and then gently bent to fit the curve. To add some more strength to the surface, I'll now go over all the paper mache with mod rock or plaster bandage, and this will be the base that all my scenics will then sit on. And I can also lay the plaster bandage right on the edge of the fascia, which then covers up that gap before the paper mache starts. The mod rock dries really quickly, so I can swiftly move on to painting the whole surface brown. For those wondering, I just use very cheap acrylics for this. Usually it's a burnt umber colour with a small amount of black mixed in just to darken it down to a more dirt mud colour. You can also see some of the tree sockets I've installed too. These are for the Woodland Scenics armatures so that I can add the trees on later. With the basic landscape now mostly complete, I can turn my attention to the track for the first time as this needs ballasting before I go any further. Of course, you can really ballast track at any time, but I find that if I leave it any later than this, it starts to get a bit more tricky as you have to be careful of other scenics that you may have already added. For the ballast, I'm using the tried and tested technique of adding it all dry and then fixing it in place with a glue solution over the top. That is a mix of 50% water and 50% PVA glue, and then when you've got all that nice and mixed up, you just add a tiny drop of washing up liquid. And when I say a tiny drop of washing up liquid, I really do mean a tiny amount. It just breaks down the surface tension of the water so that it flows into all the gaps between the grains of ballast and when it dries it'll lock it and the track into place. As you can see getting access under the bridge was a little bit tricky, luckily the syringe was long enough to get underneath but it was hard to see what I was doing. Speaking of the bridge, for the road that runs over the railway I'll be using a very similar technique. First I'll add the surface texture itself, and this is the Geoscenics Road Powder from their Pothole Road Kit. And even though this powder is already really fine, you'll notice that I'm using a sieve to put it on just so that I can get a nice even surface. Once I'm happy with how it looks, the powder is then sprayed with water using a mister. The same glue solution I used for the ballast is then used over the top of this to fix the powder in place. For the area around where the cottage will sit, I'm actually going to use the sort of sand coloured powder that also is provided in the Geoscenics kit. And my thinking here is that this isn't tarmac like the road surface, it's more like crushed gravel or fine dust that you sometimes get in driveways. 
Again, once it's in position, I mist it with water and the glue solution is added. Meanwhile, now that the ballast has mostly dried, I'll add a strip of PVA alongside it to create a dirt verge next to the track. And obviously this is neat PVA, it isn't the watery solution I've been using for everything else. Fine dirt is then dropped into the PVA to create a textured edge to the line side. And as I've mentioned before, this is actual dirt I get from the garden, baked in the oven to remove any bacteria of course, and then sieved really fine. With the base held down by the PVA, I'll then go over the top of this with the glue solution to just as a belt and braces approach. This will just create a nice hard durable surface once it's dry, so I won't have to worry that the top surface will come loose at any point. And I'm going to use this technique up by the tree sockets as well. Since these trees will be fairly close together, the light would have a harder time reaching the ground so more dirt would be visible here. I'm still planning to put grass in this area, but it'll be a thinner layer, so having this ground texture underneath will add a little bit of extra detail. Like I said at the start of this video, the layout's very first exhibition is coming up really soon and actually by the time you watch this, it will have already happened. That means that the next episode in this series is available to watch right now for channel members. So if you wanna see exactly what it's like taking a layout of this size to a show and keeping it running all weekend in front of a huge crowd of visitors, well, believe me, you don't wanna miss this one. It's only £1.99 for a month, so less than a coffee. And of course, you don't just get early access to that one video, you get to see pretty much all of my videos before everyone else, along with some exclusive videos, some of which are already out already, some of which are coming really, really soon. All you have to do is click the join button below this video. You can see all the info before you make any kind of decision. And yeah, hopefully I'll see some of you in the members area really soon. As I'm sure you all know by now, I really like to add static grass to my layouts, but the side of this cutting is quite steep and I'm not sure if the grass will stick here or if it does, if it'll even look right. So to be safe, I'm adding some scenic mud along here just in case the grass all falls off, although I do hope that doesn't happen. Once again, I'm using my flexible dry stone walls on this module, initially up by the road to create a boundary on either side of the bridge. I'll mostly be using it up the rear side of the cutting though, and this will allow me to disguise the joint to the back scenes more easily in the future. You can see how easily I create big long stretches of this as the joints are hidden quite nicely when the individual sections are joined together.
And of course, being flexible, I can bend this around where the house will sit to create a little front garden or driveway style area. For those of you wanting to buy more of this, by the way, thank you so much for your interest. I really have been overwhelmed at how popular this has been. At the moment, I'm just trying to build up enough stock so that when we do put it on sale again, you won't all have to wait for as long after ordering it. I'm not sure when that will be yet, but I will say that channel members are going to get an early heads up. So if you do want to be at a chance with getting some before it all sells out again, that's another great reason to become a channel member if you're already thinking about it. With the wall in place though, I can now move on to the static grass, starting off with yet another base layer of PVA glue. You can see I've got some newspaper over the track, and that's because the ballast hadn't fully dried at this point. It was like 95% there, obviously hard enough that I could do the dirt verge, but it was still a little sticky, so I just wanted to avoid getting any grass fibers stuck to the track, as that wouldn't look too great. As always, I'll be adding several layers of static grass to build up the standard look I've used all over the layout. This is a 2mm summer grass I'm adding here, and as usual, there are links in the description to everything I'm using in this video for those of you who are also needing supplies for your own layout. Obviously, there's quite a lot of ground to cover on this module, so getting this initial base layer on does take a while. As I'm sure you will know by now, to add more depth to the grass, I use layering spray. 4mm spring grass is then added over the top, and this adds a little bit of extra height to the grass as well as some additional variation to the colour too. And this is really where you can see the static effects start to take place with the fibers standing up on end. And overall, having a slightly longer grass makes these areas feel a bit more wild. After all, we don't want them to look like a perfectly mowed football pitch. Amazingly, the grass on the cutting is actually going down fairly well. That said, I do still have a plan up my sleeve for this area to improve it even more. And while I'm using the 4mm static grass, you can see I've added some patches of glue around the track and the dirt verge. I'll add the 4mm grass directly to these, and because it's less dense, it gives the appearance of the grass thinning out slightly. And it also breaks up the harsh lines between the grass, dirt and ballast too, so that everything looks more natural. The excess can then be hoovered up afterwards, and this can be reused on other parts of the layout. And already you can see how affected these little patches of grass will be once the glue has fully dried. The same is done around the tree sockets. I'm going for a more consistent look here, but again, by going straight in with the 4mm fibres, it'll give this a less dense look, which was why it was still important to put the soil down first. To finish off the grass, additional small areas of layering spray are added around the module. This is to create patches of dried grass, again for more texture and colour variation. Personally, I really like this look. Given that railways are usually modelled in summer, having some dead grass that has dried out in the sun can add a lot of realism to a scene. I do also use some patches of autumn grass too, which is slightly darker, and this just allows me to create some areas of shade. And as I always say, for me the static grass is really when a module starts to come to life. This is the point where it stops looking like a work in progress to me, and more like the scene that I'm aiming for.
Our other sponsor today is Model Railway Scenes, a really great company who have a huge range of 3D printed products that are perfect for any model railway. I've been using these guys and their 3D printed range all over the layout and even now I'm still amazed by the quality of their prints. I mean, just look at this telephone box here hiding behind the station. Their prices are already really reasonable in my opinion, but Model Railway Scenes have gone one better by offering you guys a 25% discount on all of their 3D printed products. Just use the code TMRG2023, yes I know it's now 2024, but I believe that code is still valid, so you don't have to worry about that. Just use that code when you check out on their website, modelrailwayscenes.com, or there's a handy link in the description. And yeah, thank you so much to Model Railway Scenes for sponsoring this series. With all the static grass now in place, I can start to add the fencing up the side of the cutting. Initially, I make a hole for each post using a pin drill. And this is fairly easy to do since the surface is just plaster bandage. Each post is then placed into a hole with PVA around the base to hold it in position. You can see here how the surface flexes while making the holes, so I do have to be careful not to put a much bigger hole in the scenics by accident. Once all the posts are installed, next up is adding the wire. A fine pair of tweezers are absolutely vital for this job as the wire is threaded through the small holes in each post. As I've mentioned before, personally I prefer to start at the bottom and work my way up to the top hole. I really do enjoy this job as the finished result looks really intricate and adds a huge amount of detail to the layout. In reality though, it's not actually as hard as it looks to do and certainly once you've got a rhythm down, you can get through an entire stretch of this fairly quickly. Of course, once the impending deadline of the exhibition is out of the way, I'll probably come back in the future and tone down the shiny wire just to weather it slightly for a more realistic finish. Now, as I said earlier, I've got one trick left over to create some more detail on the side of the cutting. As you can see, I've got some newspaper to cover up both the track and the flat area where the cottage will sit. I'm then going to spray some yacht varnish over the grass on the side of the cutting. And now it's time to add my homemade polyfiber undergrowth to the area to create some extra vegetation beside the running line. And this has been slightly adapted from my first attempts that I used in the previous episode on the embankment module. For starters, the sections of polyfiber I'm using are much larger, so the undergrowth has a much bigger spread. The base has also been painted a dark green this time instead of brown, which I think works much better, and I've also used a variety of different scatters over the top for some extra variation. This definitely looks a lot better in my opinion, and I'm actually excited to use this technique on more layouts in the future. Additional foliage is also placed around the base of the walling to blend it in. As always, the aim is to make it look like these things have been around for a while, rather than the whole layout looking brand new and pristine.
Finally, foliage can also be used around the bridge to hide the join between the landscape and the support structures. Again, I really want to blend this into the landscape, as this structure would probably predate even the Preservation Society who now run the railway. The overall result though is really nice. The module doesn't look too cluttered, but it has that nice wild look to it, making everything seem a bit more natural. The final step is to put the cottage in position to really finish off the scene. I'll place an Oxford diecast car in the driveway too. Again, this is a modern day car which just reaffirms to anyone viewing the layout that it's a heritage railway set in the present day. And one last finishing touch is to install the trees into their sockets. Again, this creates a little bit of extra scenery for the trains to disappear behind as they head under the bridge and into the fiddle yard. And speaking of trains, it seems like I finished just in time. I have to admit, I would definitely like to live in that house up on the hill there. Hopefully it's an enthusiast or maybe even a volunteer at the railway who does live there. And so with that, the final module is complete, and that means the entire layout is finished too. Okay, yes, there are still lots of little things that need to be done before the exhibition, but all 10 modules now have scenery on them, ready to be presented to the public for the first time. I'll be covering all those little jobs that need to be done before the show in the next episode, as well as taking you along to the exhibition itself too. Don't forget, if you're a channel member, you can watch that video right now, and here's a look at what's coming up. I add the finishing touches, the layout is packed up for the exhibition, and Pitley Steam Railway gets its first visitor.